Good evening, everyone. Uh, today is Monday, March 6th. My name is Tyler. I serve on staff here at Northwest Hills UMC as the Director of Youth and Digital Ministry. And I welcome you to this video, the third in our series of 2023 Linton Reflections. And I want to begin today's reflection with a scripture reading. It's one where the author is making an argument for what it looks like to live life as a transformed community in union with the risen Lord. It's a picture of resurrected life, and it comes to us from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. So before I read this, I want to invite you to find a comfortable seat, close your eyes, Take a moment to just scan uh, from your head through your body and release any tension that you may be carrying so you can hear these words with fresh ears. As I'm reading, I want you to notice what jumps out to you and any images that may form in your mind. So you close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And let us read and hear these words from the Colossians 3, 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So also you must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. These, my friends, are holy words for a holy people. Thanks be to God. Now, if anything in particular struck you or jumped out to you, or if you had a particular image maybe appear in your mind that moved you, I would invite you to pause this video now, uh, grab a pen and a piece of paper, or maybe just open a note in your computer or in your phone, and take a moment to write whatever that was down, and then sit with it as long as you'd like to. Because sometimes the uh, kinesthetic brain-body connection that gets activated when we write our thoughts, emotions, or reflections can help not only lock in that memory of what we felt in that moment, but also unlock new insights as we dedicate more of our consciousness to processing what we felt or what we learned. So go ahead and do that if you would like to. And when you're ready, come back to the video. Or if you're ready to keep rocking with me, just stay here. Now, I've been thinking about this passage a lot today because we had a church work day here at Northwest Hills on Saturday where people gathered as the body of Christ, not to worship in the traditional ways that we worship together, but rather to engage in acts of landscaping and cleaning and general handy personing. I'm not sure if that's a word, but I think you understand what I mean when you imagine what it is to handy person. As we sought to do a little spring cleaning and kind of refresh our physical campus here, right? We were doing the kinds of cleaning and yard work and maintenance tasks that you may be accustomed to doing around your own home, but that don't really get done in the same kind of way or with the same kind of frequency here. And so, yeah, that's what we did on Saturday morning. And going into the workday, I got to be honest with you watching this, I, I wasn't feeling dread necessarily, but I definitely wasn't eagerly anticipating the opportunity to wake up early on a Saturday morning to do landscaping either. Right? Like, on the one hand, um, as a church employee, I 
for sure was feeling some kind of anxiousness or trepidation that like no one would show up or that very few people would show up, which would create its own kind of uh, awkwardness and, and be a kind of concern. And, you know, um, oh, me of little faith, was I so wrong about that part? But also, I think I was personally viewing the event as, like, honestly, a bit of a burden. Just thinking about the way that I like to structure my own week and spend my time. Honestly speaking, as I mentioned, I wasn't super thrilled about the idea of waking up early on a Saturday morning to go, like, do landscaping at the church. And so I show up on Saturday, and I'm, I'm kind of carrying that energy a bit. And I find some people who are... Uh, in the midst of work and they're holding some pruning shears and they seem to know what they're doing. And I'm just like, Hey, what do you need? Where can I be helpful? And they kind of tell me where to go. And I start working in the flower bed under the main church sign, just off of village center drive, the Northwest Hills UMC sign uh, that you drive past on village center or that you see as you turn into that main parking lot. And I'm working there with a handful of other people, all of whom I already knew right? Like we weren't strangers necessarily, but maybe we just knew each other as like church acquaintances. We would say hi to each other on Sunday morning and maybe chit chat for a few minutes, but that's about it. But now we're all in this shared space together and we're all pointed toward this same task. We're all seeking to do something to give back to this community that's given us so much. And when you're in the flower bed together, life just moves a lot slower than it does in the narthex on a Sunday morning when you're drinking your coffee five minutes before worship starts. And all of a sudden, without me even recognizing that it was happening, it wasn't like in my head, like, oh man, I gotta go do landscaping, what a bummer. It was, oh hey, I didn't know that about you. That's so cool. And it was, wow, man, this weather sure is perfect, isn't it? And that is so fascinating. Tell me more about your personal war against nutgrass. I have never met anyone who hates a kind of grass this much. And we're just, we're doing life together, but at a different pace and on a different level than what we might share in our comings and goings of a Sunday worship service. And as we're working to, in some ways, revive our physical campus as we're preparing this flower bed for the new life of spring, I was experiencing kind of a revival in terms of how I was approaching my Saturday. And in the joy of working together, and just getting to know each other on a deeper level, I was feeling what it means to live as a community of God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothed with love. I felt the peace of Christ rule in my heart because indeed we are one body. And I was thankful. So Lent is often a time when people of God take off something old to put on something new. Perhaps we feast, uh, we fast from something to feast on something else. So I would encourage you when this video ends to read for yourself Colossians 3 verses 12 through 17. And as you read, I would invite you to reflect on your place as one of God's chosen ones, holy and beloved in your community. Maybe spend a little bit of time imagining what new ways God might be calling you to exist within this community. And perhaps even giving thanks for all of the ways that God has shown up in your life through this community. Friends, I'll see you on Friday.